actor Robert Stack was best known for his role as real-life 1930s Chicago gangbuster and Prohibition agent Elliot Ness in the TV series The Untouchables, which ran for four years from October 1959. As Ness, he exuded incorruptibility and a certain wry humour behind the earnest facade. However, Stack had to wait 20 years in mostly undemanding screen roles before being launched into TV superstardom. There were two Robert Stacks, the pre-war pretty boy and the hardened post-war hero of mostly action movies. Among his films were two celebrated firsts. In his film debut, First Love in 1939, Stack, then age 20, got to give fresh-faced teenage star Deanna Durbin, aged 18, her first screen kiss. Some years later, he starred in Buona Devil in 1952, the first feature made in 3D. A fifth-generation Californian, Stack was born Robert Langford Modini in Los Angeles. He began to pursue acting seriously during his second year at the University of Southern California. At the same time, he became a national skeet champion, a star of the university polo team, and a speedboat racer. He was seen in an amateur stage production by a Universal Studios talent scout and signed a contract. Stack was loaned out to MGM for Frank Borsage's The Mortal Storm in 1940, in which he played a Nazi in his all-American manner. He was soon back at Universal, opposite Durbin again in Nice Girl in 1941. The following year, Stack made an impact in Ernest Lubitsch's comic masterpiece To Be or Not To Be as the free Polish pilot who drops into Jack Benny's pyjamas and falls for Benny's wife Carol Lombard. Every time Benny, an actor playing Hamlet, begins the soliloquy of the title, it is the signal for Stack to meet Lombard backstage. Stack played a pilot again as an American flyer with the RAF in Eagle Squadron in 1942. He was an aerial gunnery instructor during the war and on his return had lost his boyish grin and features, becoming instead the strong and silent type. He was a pilot again in Fighter Squadron in 1948 and the beau of teenage soprano Jane Powell, successor to Deanna Durbin, in A Date with Judy in 1948. Bud Boeticher gave Stack one of his better screen roles in The Bullfighter and The Lady in 1951 as an American on holiday in Mexico who becomes a matador. After two sterling westerns, Conquest of Koshais and War Paint, both in 1953, in which Stack was a cavalry officer dealing with Native Americans, he was back to playing pilots. In Sabrejet in 1953, he was busy bombing Koreans, while in The High and the Mighty in 1954, he was the jittery captain of a passenger plane that has lost an engine. As a cop in Sam Fuller's House of Bamboo in 1955 and a Confederate soldier in Jacques Tourneur's Great Day in the Morning in 1956, he represented toughness. Hey, if you're enjoying this video, make sure you give it a like and subscribe to remember this if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all of our latest content. In the latter western in which he teaches the son of the man he killed how to shoot, knowing he is likely to become the boy's first victim, Stack revealed tragic depths. Douglas Sirk recognized this and gave him two of his most challenging roles. In Written on the Wind in 1956, Stack was Oscar nominated for his performance as the weak alcoholic to salute Skyon of a Texas oil family. Although he was cast as a pilot again in The Tarnished Angels in 1958, his portrayal of an ex-First World War ace, now a stunt flyer, shows insecurity under the macho surface. After John Paul Jones in 1959, in which he played the Scots-born father of the US Navy, Stack got his most famous role by default. Van Johnson was originally slated to play Elliot Ness, but he backed out the weekend before filming over a money dispute. While the show started out as a semi-documentary treatment of the aftermath of the Roaring Twenties, it quickly moved into more fictionalized stories. You don't realize how lousy strict documentaries are, plus the fact that you're libeling someone every 37 seconds, Stack explained. 
The real Elliot Ness disbanded his agents in 1932, but the show took the gang into the 40s, wrestling with mobsters that Ness never encountered, and even Nazis. Italian-American groups protested over what they felt was an unfair presentation of their people as mafia types, so the role of Nick Rossi, one of Ness's men, was beefed up to show the formidable influence that Italian-Americans displayed in fighting crime. Stack was often accosted by small-time crooks on the street, suggesting that they might make a good villain for the show. In 1963, when the violence was toned down and Stack, who won an Emmy Award, was made to soften his character, it lost much of its audience. Stack returned to films, mostly parodying his earlier gung-ho image in slapstick pieces such as Steven Spielberg's 1941 and 1979, Airplane in 1980, and Caddyshack 2 in 1988, and Basketball in 1999. In the last, created by the South Park team, Stack took off his role as the solemn host in Unsolved Mysteries, US television's most popular reality-based series. Stack was honored with the Commander-in-Chief's Gold Medal of Merit and Citation Award at the Veterans of Foreign Wars National Convention for his significant contribution to American values. He is survived by his wife Rosemary, a son and a daughter. Robert Stack, actor, was born on January the 13th, 1919, and died on May the 14th, 2003. Now it's time to hear from you. Do you have a favorite Robert Stack movie that you like the most, or perhaps a moment in his career that you remember the most? Let us know in the comments below, and if you haven't already done so, click the bell icon to stay updated on all of our latest content.